Hive. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hi, this is Sherry Sims, founder of Black Career Women's Network, and thank you for tuning in to another uh, career conversation. And it has been a while. I swear, our last uh, conversation we did was with Zena Thomas back in June when she talked about leading, um, leading in your career, um, leading where you are, should I say. So tonight, I'm ex so excited about tonight's guest. I mean, this is a woman who gets it when it comes to Black career women to the fullest. <laughs> Her and I have had several conversations in depth about uh, what it is to be a black career woman um, in today's society and where we're going. And so I'm very excited to have this discussion about her. This is one of her areas of expertise of many. And her name is Deborah Gray Young. She is an executive coach out of Chicago, Illinois. And she is also a new BCWN career mentor. Woohoo! I'm excited about that. So she is our special guest for tonight. And she's going to be talking to our viewers and our members and our guests um, on our Google Hangout tonight about how to be politically savvy at work. And I know a lot of you ladies who are listening or are watching live, you're like, I don't want to play the game. I don't have to play the game. I don't need to. I'm going to be myself. Well, you know what? You're fooling yourself because you definitely need to learn how to play the game. So, uh, you know, Deborah is going to be talking about the, that tonight. But before uh, I introduce her, I do want to share some things about Deborah. Um, Deborah is a certified professional and executive coach. Um, she's dedicated to helping women of color navigate the intersection of their personal and professional lives. This is one of the things I love about her because she is all about empowering us, you know, us brown women, okay? So I love that. Her mission today is to help professional women of color better manage in the politics and biases they encounter in the workplace. Girl, I'm already loving you to death. Isn't that fantastic, you guys? <laughs> she also coaches clients um, um, and, and she's loaded for her intuitive listening and keen insight. Um, that she has been able to help them develop into life-changing strategies. Now, one of her clients said this about her. They said, there's nothing like someone who can truly get to the insights without a, a judgmental eye, but, but a spirit of guidance and true concern for success. Another client offered this as well. They said, Deborah offers no magic pill, just good, solid guidance that makes me focus and gain clarity around my goals. And that's what we need. We need that as black women is to get that clarity straight to the point, but understand the dynamics of where we wanted to go. Um, as a trailblazer, Deborah has been in the trenches and knows all too well the struggles um, of women of color that what we would endure um, to achieve success. She has had a successful 30 year career in advertising, um, is an award winning and highly regarded marketing communications professional. Her insight has been sought after by major businesses and industries. Um, trade publications such as Wall Street, US, uh, USA Today, and the Washington Post, and more. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce Ms. Deborah Gray Young. Welcome to our, our career conversation, Deborah. So hi, Sherry, and hi, everybody who's listening in. This is so exciting. I am um, just really thrilled to be a part of this. And as Sherry said, we have had a, a number of conversations, and they have been funny and long and serious and so we just kind of look at this as a continuation of what we started um, talking about a few weeks ago and so I am so honored to um, be taking a part of taking part in this but also to um, be newly uh, a new mentor coach for the organization because I think um, what um, BCWN is doing and what it has does for uh, what it has done for women of color is just so extraordinarily important. And so, um, my hat off to you, Sherry, um, for what you do for founding this organization, and my hat off to um, the other mentor coaches because um, the work that you do is so important, and um, and I really believe in it. So. Thank you, and I'm um, just a glad, a glad to be a part of the group. So let's thank you, Deborah. We're glad. And I'm very excited. Like I said, you know, you you get a, like a lot of our other coaches, but it is more or less for you. It's part of what your mission is. So you focus on that. And I think that's what's so exciting about having you be a part of the network is that you do get it. Not that others do not because they do, but this is really what your voice is all about. And so that, to me, being that niche and specific is, is, is highly important um, to make sure that your voice is heard throughout the network. So welcome. Thank you. 
And so let's get right into it. So I know that we're talking about being politically savvy. So for those of women who are watching right now who may not completely understand specifically what you mean by that, explain to them what it is. What is it to be politically savvy? Politically savvy. So here's, here's my definition of it, and then we'll talk a little bit about what it is not, right? Right. So being politically savvy is simply this, your awareness of the dynamics that impact and influence your career trajectory, right? Just plain and simple. Being aware of the dynamics that are going to impact or influence your career trajectory. And so that that's it in a nutshell. That way it really gives you permission, if you will, to sort of define it in your own terms, right? And so as, as you pointed out, a lot of people, particularly women of color, when, when you hear, you know, when you start talking about being politically savvy, oh, I don't have time, I, you know, I don't want to play the games and all of those kinds of things. But the fact of the matter is you do need to be politically savvy. And so let's talk a little bit about what it's not or what it does not have to be, right? So it doesn't have to be brown nosing. Um, it doesn't have to be you going out and learning how to play golf, <laughs> you know, and being on the golf course. <laughs> right. Although that might help, right? <laughs> but it doesn't involve, it doesn't necessarily mean that. But it does mean that you need to be aware of what's going on around you. As I, and as, as I say, looking at sort of the larger board, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and where you fit in or where you want to go. So it really is about being aware of of your surroundings but in a larger context and so um if you could think about it as being um being um in it but not of it or yeah so you know no, being yes. aware of it, but not necessarily immersed in, in it so but no, it is a great way to put it that's a great way to put it as far as being in it but not of it you know and i think you triggered something when you said this because i talk to women about this all the time and we'll, and we'll talk about like if they're getting a new job, Deborah. So, you know, I tell women when you're getting a new job that you need to think about specific things when you walk into that door. Because we're already number one. You're taking this new job and they're saying the culture is one way, but you really don't know what you're walking into, right? That's exactly right. So the matter of fact that you say that being aware of your surroundings is hugely important. So women listen to that. You know, that's very important is being aware of your surroundings, whether you're new to the job or, or not. Um, and specifically those of you who are new to the job, that should be one of your missions is to, to get, you know, highly aware of your surroundings fairly quickly. Right. And what do you suggest some of the things that they do um, to get to to um, heighten their level of awareness in the workplace, specifically if they're new um, to a role well, or to to that job work, work environment? Excellent, excellent question. Excellent question. So. So a couple of things. One, um, even if you're not new to the job and you just have this sort of disdain, right, for, for being politically savvy, you absolutely need to know who are the key people that have some influence or impact over your, your success within the organization. So that includes just your, you know, who you report to directly. Um, if you're new to to the um, position and to the company, then you know there may be, depending on where you entered, you may have a number of levels above you. But in any case, you need to know who those people are. So that's number one. So it it, it could be your immediate supervisor, manager, director, whatever you know the levels of management are. Um, above you if there are any. So that's number one. You need to know who those people are and we'll circle back and, and, and talk a little bit more about that. You also need to just really be aware of what I call the roles, right? So what are the roles that have some influence or impact over your um, position and, 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 and where you want to go? And so what I mean by that is, so if you're in the finance department, um, in the finance area, um, who is not only the CFO, but any, um, you know, lines of um, direct reports that come out of the CFO's office. And the reason you want to know that is because people change all the time, right? They rotate in and out of positions, but the role 
is critical to the organization. So you need to understand what role does that position play in the organization and therefore what impact it has on you as well as the people who occupy those roles, right? So that's you know, that's very, very important. And that's why I say it's almost like looking at a larger board. If you if you think about like a board game, right? So a Monopoly or chess or something like that. Um, understanding the larger board. And then also it's really, really important for you at some point to determine what it is or where it is you want to go within the organization, right? And so it's um, that's really important because you can't just you know walk in the door, sit down, and keep your head down and do your work and think that um, some magic something magic is going to happen to kind of get you to the next step. You really do need to have some sense of where you want to go within the organization. Now you might not know that walking in, which is fine. Um, but at some point you need to define that because that will help you map out um, the steps that you need to take to accomplish that. No, I think that you've hit a lot of that on, you know, it definitely is on point. And I, 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 you know, it's almost like when you were talking about, you know, looking at the bigger picture, it's almost like, don't give me the employee hand, but just give me the org chart. I need to know. <laughs> that, no, that's you exactly know? right. <laughs> The org chart. You can throw the handbook in the trash. I need the org chart so I can see how this is going. These dynamics are going to impact me. Exactly. But I, I love how you explain that. That it's you know you need to change your mindset. Yeah, we do want to walk in with a specific expectation about maybe where, where we want to go in the organization. But again, you're saying look at the dynamics of all the people in the in the. I'm gonna say the org chart. Honestly, yeah. you know what I'm saying and seeing what's going to impact you or what, or who, whom or what could hinder you from moving to where you want to go with an organization. I think that that's smart um, to do that. Not only is it smart, but if you have to create an org chart and kind of put your little particular words by each one to kind of, kind of give you an idea of who's who and, and how, I mean, that's, that's being hugely strategic. Yes. Um, you know, and I think that is, that's something that, you know, I wish I would have learned, um, all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, early on in my HR career. I mean, that would have probably, you know, changed uh, changed the dynamics of how I even communicated with a lot of people, okay. how with everything, it would have right, just changed exactly the dynamics right. of everything. Yeah. So I like that. So let's talk about um, the benefits, the benefits of, of being politically savvy um, in the workplace. Because I think, and let's back up first, I guess, before we talk about the benefits. And let's talk about the perception that Black women may have about playing the game? So, so great, um, great question. So here's the thing, and this will lead right into benefits, right? Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. The, one of the, the I, I don't like the word disadvantage, but one of the challenges we have when we get inside of a corporation, um, they're very often not too many people that look like us and or have the same sort of frame of experience that we do. So for, for the typical corporate manager, um, their experience is completely different from ours. Right. Completely different, right? They, they don't live in our neighborhoods, didn't go to our schools, they don't look anything like us, right? right. Um, so their awareness of us and what they know about us is wholly dependent, for the most part, on what they see in the media. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. <laughs> but we are going to go there, you guys. <laughs> not going to spend too much time on that. I promise. <laughs> That's a whole other soapbox. No, but we're going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> a whole other soapbox. I know. I know. <laughs> no. So getting back on point, um, so we're an enigma, mm -hmm. right? And 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 in many instances, we don't fit what the what the image is that they have in their head, and what they've been traditionally taught about us, and then of course what they see every day in the media and how that's reinforced. Yes. So 
when you show up with all your credentials from, you know, wherever you got them, right, Harvard, right on down to CCNY where I went, it, it is just so incongruent with what they um, think you are, who they think you are. So that's the first thing. And so, I mean, we could spend a whole other hour just talking about stereotypes, right, because that's my other hot button. Um, so, so you're kind of dealing with some of that. And as well as low expectations based, again, on the stereotypes and sort of what, you know, the typical corporate manager, um, what their perception is of um, women of color. Because they don't know us, right? Yeah. Right. And so, you know, they think all of us are Beyonce or um, one of them, you know, reality TV people. I'm not going there. I'm, I'm, I promise I won't stay on that. But so that that's a challenge. Yeah, right. That that's a that's a huge challenge, and and for many of us, we don't even realize that that's a lot of what we're having to overcome. Right. We have to get over that. Get when I say get over it, have to find a way to get past that. So you either go through it, around it, or over it, or under it. Right. Because yeah. for the most part, it's not or, or, you know, or you'll go crazy. So you'll just have to you have to find a way to to manage that and get around that. So that's the first thing in terms of, um, you know, becoming politically savvy is understanding what you're dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the other objection that I hear from people a lot is, well, you know, I don't want to be phony. Well, this is not about being phony. You know, this is not about being inauthentic. That's not what this is. It is um, very much about, as I said in the beginning, being aware of all the the people and the dynamics that can impact um, your trajectory within the organization and without the with you know on the outside of the organization as yeah, well, right. right? So within your within your industry, mm -hmm. right? That becomes mm -hmm. very very important. And so, um, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's sort of like a necess. It's an I don't want to call it an evil because I think it really depends. A lot of it has to do with how you choose to look at it, right? So if you look at it as a necessary evil, then that's what it'll be. It'll become self-fulfilling. So you look at it as a necessity for success and however you define success. Because even if you're not in an organization, if you're, even if you're in your own business, your political savviness is going to be your lifeline, right? right? Right. That's so true. That's so true. And I think that... Um, the more you raise your level of awareness to what's going on around you, then you can choose on how you can respond to it based That's on what right. you know, right? So yeah. it's, I mean, you, but you, you've got, it's like, it's come on, it's almost like what, you know, what Maya says, you know better, you do better. So, but not, and knowledge is power, but you have to put position yourself to understand what's going on around you and walking in being naive um, to that, thinking that you will be treated fairly or that everything is going to go right for you or in that environment. I just think that's kind of the wrong attitude to have. We're not saying going guns blazing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely need to go in and, and, and uh, like I said, not necessarily guarded, but just like you said, very, uh, try to be very aware of what's going on around you. Yeah. <laughs> what, you know, and what's going to impact you. And again, I, that's, so here's, here's kind of how i frame it up for myself that this has sort of been my, my secret weapon, right? So I kept my head down, but my eyes up. Right. I like that. Yeah. So head down, eyes up, meaning um, I kept my head down and did, and did what I was there to do and then some and learning everything that I could so that I could be um, the best at what I, I did. But I always kept my eyes up and open to watch what was going on. So who influenced who, um, and, and all of those kinds of things, so that I could see what was coming around the corner. Because that's the other that's the other piece. You need to be able to see around corners, and um, and know what to do about what you see coming around the corner. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? That's so right. And I think what happens is once we become aware of what's going to happen or what's coming around the corner, I think what happens is we get stuck because we don't know what to do. We don't know right. what to do next, how to handle that. So um, I think this is a good way to segue into, into that. Cause I know that we talked about some of the things that when, you know, what it's not, what it is, 
Um, uh, we really haven't talked about some of the specific people, the myths they may have around it. But let's talk about what happens when you start to notice what's going on around you and then you do not know how to deal with it or handle it. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. And so, and this is where it becomes extremely beneficial to not be in it, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can just you can just sort of watch how it's playing out. But so here's the thing: um, the, the a huge part of this is really knowing what your contribution is to the organization, right? So you you absolutely have to understand that. And again, if you're just walking in the door, you may not know that, right? Um, right. But if you've been there for you know a, a while, you have some sense of what um, what your contribution is, and then you also have some sense of hopefully you have some sense of what you need to strengthen. Because um, I'm a I'm a big believer in playing to your strengths. So the stuff that you're not good at, just don't even spend the energy yes, on it. Yes, I, I am too. So I'm glad we're on the same page with that because yeah. that's important. Play to your strengths. So when you see things. Um, that you don't quite know what to do about, first of all, you have to just sort of, you know, look at it, look at it from a couple of different angles. I'm, I'm, I'm good for like turning stuff upside down. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? Um, but here's the thing. The key to all of this is relationships. That's really, really what we're talking about here. Yes. Right? Relationships. And so, um, when you don't know what to do about something, the only way to, not the only way, but one of the key ways to be able to help get um, that insight that you need in those kinds of situations is to have people or a person that you can talk to, right? Somebody that can give you either the inside scoop or just give you some guidance um, about that. That's hugely important, and that's why being politically savvy is so important because, and this is what even um, got me started down this, this, um, this path in terms of all of the blog posts and things I was doing on this topic is because I was coming across so many women who, who said to me, um, well, they told me I could get promoted, but I'm not politically savvy, or I'm not savvy enough, or I'm not political enough. And what and and so it would always start out with, well, what do they mean when they say I'm not politically savvy, or what do they mean when they say, you know, we would promote you, but you're not politically savvy enough. And what that really meant was somebody up top or somewhere in the organization that had some influence or impact on her career trajectory didn't know who she was. Right. You know, didn't know who she was that might have known a little bit about her work, but had no relationship with her. It's probably somebody she's passed in the hall, you know, a hundred times and has never even said hello to. Mm -hmm. Knew who the person was, but never spoke to them or anything like that. And so that's what this really all comes down to. What are, you know, the relationships with the key people in the organization. And I'm not talking about inviting them over for dinner. That's, you know, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, but giving them a glimpse into who you are professionally, right? Right. A, a little bit about what makes you tick, a little bit about the values that you uh, that inform what it is that you do for the organization, so that when you find yourself faced with these dilemmas that you don't quite know what to do with, then you have somebody that you can call or talk to. Um, that can give you some insight or help you navigate what might be coming around the corner. And that's where a lot of us get stuck, right? Because we don't have um, sort of, we don't have the ability to pick up the phone and call somebody to, to you know, to interpret it for us or give us, um, you know, some, some insight. And it, it, as you and I were talking about earlier, the study that everybody's been talking about today that um, Working Mothers Research Institute um, just released. Of course, it just confirms everything that we already know, right? right. That, um, that women of color don't feel like they have as much access um, to mentors and to training programs and they feel like, you know, 
we we're not um, we don't get as many opportunities to excel. I mean, all the things that we already know, not even intuitively. I mean, we know for a fact because everybody, I'm sure everybody that's even on this call tonight has a story, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the, the study just confirms for us what we already know, and uh, so much of what they what that study confirms. It really is about the lack of political savvy. And you know, and it is, and I think that that's something we need to be educated on more that I think that can help us in the workplace as we tend, you know, as we grow, you part, you, again, you're absolutely right. That's part of why the part of the reason why we're leaving. But I yeah. think we're leaving partially because part, not the whole reason, but the partially because we do not know how to navigate through or be savvy at that. Um, and it has well, nothing we have misconceptions about what being savvy means. Right. And it's not, it has nothing to do with our race. It's just that, I mean, it's, we, we just, there are misconceptions about that and we definitely need to be more educated on how to, to, to deal with it and how to cope and, you know, right. our coping skills, all those things need to be looked at too, because, and how we perceive it coming towards us. You know what I mean? And I think, and you, I mean, you probably hear it as much as I do about, um, the, even some of the misconceptions that we place upon them when it comes to the to the politics. So you just raised a really interesting point, and this is something else that I that I saw a lot too. I continue to see a lot. When um, you talked about our coping mechanism, and one of the challenges for us as women of color um, is that um, we typically um, have an aversion to asking for help. Right, because so, it's not how we're raised. We're raised to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, you know, independent, mm -hmm. you know. And so, asking for help. Now, we're more than willing to help anybody that asks. We're even willing to help people who haven't asked. Right. But when it comes <laughs> to um, seeking out help for ourselves, that comes way down on the list. We're that we're not good at that. We're not good at asking um, for help. And so that's the that's another challenge. That's another challenge. So we try to navigate it on our own, and um, it doesn't always work out the way that we would hope that it, it works out. And that's why, that's another huge reason why, as you always laugh at me when I say this, that why women of color are running out of corporate America like the buildings are on fire. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and they are running like the buildings are on fire. Like, you would think the buildings were on fire. <laughs> Starting from the top floor down, you know, it's just like running up at it. Like, and they are it's so true. And you know, so I remember specifically one of my jobs where I did that. You know, um, you know, I was in the job, and you know, there was something that wasn't was miscommunicated, um, and not on my end, but the the way that the person who was receiving the message mis really in interpreted wrong. So instead of my manager and her manager coming to me and saying and get and seeking to understand, it was almost as if they they just all of a sudden didn't trust me anymore. And I'm thinking that was not necessary. All you had to do was ask, and that would have been cleared up immediately. But instead of me taking that as you know clearing it up, I looked at them and said, "Okay, it's downhill from here because if you are already approaching me um, in this manner, then you know." I'm done. My whole attitude changed. I just started coming to work, doing my job. I was in not in just coming to work, coming to work, doing my job, and that was it. Yeah. And I was what I didn't realize I was doing was digging a hole. <laughs> I was going deeper and deeper into this hole and messing myself up completely when it came to the, my relationships at work and just kind of how the perception of, of who I was and all the, and it wasn't really me. But I just felt like, wow, I mean, is this what I'm working with? Go to hell. I'm just gonna do my work and go home, you know. <laughs> You know, how dare you, you know, instead of you coming to me and, and saying, hey, you, let's get your side of the story or let's, you know, change the perception because we're team members. It should be that versus taking his word and that's it. And I, and I knew I was a new girl on the block, but still give me an opportunity to, you know, share, or share you know. yeah, rectify myself. So, yeah, I didn't realize I was digging a black hole and girl, I was falling deep off in it too. I mean, into the black abyss. There was no coming back. No coming back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and those are the lessons that you learn after the fact, right? So you, you hit upon a couple of really key things there um, in talking about, you know, just the benefits of being, um, you know, politically savvy. 
and so one of those things is um, your brand, right? Your personal mm -hmm. brand, and the fact that you know we are always building on our brand. Your brand is never set, right? It's never set in stone. It's always um, being built, always evolving, and nobody has um, any control over that except you, right? Right. That so that is your total responsibility, right? Is um, nobody has responsibility for your brand except you, and so that's a huge part of being politically savvy as well, right? So, what is it that? How is it that you present yourself? And when I say your brand or your image, um, your image is more than just how you look, mm -hmm. right? In fact, it's the least of it, right? So it, it is about your energy, the energy that you bring to your work, um, how you communicate, whether you collaborate or not. I mean, all of those things and all of those play into how um, whether or not you are politically savvy or not, right? So, because again, we're talking about relationships and that's really what it comes down to. And so, you know, how, how do you form those? How do you form those relationships? What goes into that? Um, how do you interact with, um, with, you know, the various people that you, you come in contact, all of those things. And so it, um, it's a lot more than just you know if 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 you're thinking about um, what the the whole notion of political savviness, there's so much more to it than just being a brown noser, right? So the being a brown noser is um, if you think of it that way, you really kind of miss out because the people who are brown nosing, um, they only have short-term success, right? Uh, if they have any success at all, um, because it really is. Um, not um, not a smart tactic at all, right? The, the brown nosing. It, it might get you into the office. It might get you to promotion, but then it'll be short lived, right? Because in, in today's marketplace, you got to be able to back it up. It, you know, you have to be able to to be competent as well as you know know people. So the relationships are key. But it's what I call, you, you have to be P and C, right? Not just PC, but P and C. You have to be political, politically savvy, and confident in your in your, your competency, right? You have to be competent. So it's yeah, not just... I like that. You know, I, like, I really like that. Yeah, it's, what you, it's what you know. So it's both. You know, you can't... In today's marketplace, you just can't get away with just who you know. So you can go learn how to play golf. That's great. Go play golf, but then you have to have, you know, some depth to be able to have that substantive conversation on the golf course, right? And right. then be able to act on whatever that is once you get back into the office. And so, um, being politically savvy is more than just um, brown nosing and playing a game. It's um, it really is about being strategic and about how you market yourself that's because that's really what we're talking about here right how you market yourself within your organization and even within 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 the industry that you're in right, right. and i always uh, talk about that about marketing yourself in your industry and staying active mm -hmm. um, and, and and creating a presence within your industry letting people know who you are in your industry you know what i mean Yes. Um, and I think that's very important that, that people in those circles know that, know who you are. But I think what you said that triggered something triggered something that I really would like for you to kind of dive into that I think is a common question for a lot of women, uh, black women, is when you um, you don't want to play the game, right? You um, And you talk about how um, you don't want to kiss up and all that. Okay, that's great. But I think a lot of times women look at a specific person and I think this could be sometimes a myth and sometimes it isn't true. But you have that one person who in the office and you say, you know, Joe Blow just got promoted and he doesn't do nothing. But he's friends with, you know, someone who is the level of influence. So how do you what's your take on that? What is your take on when it's someone who's able to kind of get through the ranks? Um, you kind of know that they're kind of not that they're a slacker that they're not really putting a hundred percent into what they're doing. Um, what do you? What, what's your perception on that? When people so, say, Joe Blow got a promotion, he don't do nothing. <laughs> right, and, and, but Joe Blow don't look like you either, right? right. So, <laughs> that's the first thing. So Joe Blow probably does play golf. He probably got a yacht, um, or he's been invited to the yacht. So, 
so he, here's what's important for us because you know by and large we don't play golf and we're not getting invited to the to the country club and that's fine right and this is why I was saying the internal marketing piece is important so um, how do you make yourself known and I'm not when I say make yourself known I'm not talking about running up and down the hallway acting like a crazy person <laughs> although I've been known to do that um, <laughs> but you know and it's not enough to just let your work speak for itself so that's where we get caught right so okay. you know I think one of the things I wrote about was your work is excellent but <laughs> you're right your work is excellent but nobody knows who you are mm -hmm. so you know how do you strategically let uh, get yourself known and, and and again it's not about an ad campaign but if you're leading the team that is responsible for you know innovative ideas how are you socializing that within the organization right so are you submitting the the article or whatever to the company newsletter and I'm totally making this up but you you, you get where I'm going um, you want the the key stakeholders within your organization to not only know your work but to know a little bit about you so um, so here's one of the, one of the mistakes that people who hate um, office politics this is one of the critical critical mistakes they make they don't go to any company functions yes that is number they one don't go to the Christmas party so if you ask them are you going to the company picnic well I don't want to be bothered with that well you know what you should mm -hmm. because that's the opportunity to have a conversation with the senior vice president or the executive vice president on whatever right if, if nothing else find out what books they like find out what movies they've seen it's, uh, or you know if you're reading the trades and, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute because this is a really really key piece um, but company functions is a great way to make a connection with some of those key stakeholders um, that you need to establish a relationship with and again I'm not talking about trying to be best friends with them. I'm not trying to, you know, talking about they should be in your Facebook circle or any, that's not what I'm talking about at all. But they they need to know who you are and what it is that you have done for the organization. And so making sure that people are aware um, of what your contribution is. Now, that's assuming I, I say all of this assuming that your level of competence is at the highest order right so now if you've just been sitting over in the corner skating and then people know who they are if they've just been doing it you know just um, you know half stepping then you already you have some more challenges you have some additional challenges that you need to address but um, you know go to the company events and they're not saying that you have to be the last one to leave right and you probably shouldn't be the last one to leave but you should at least be there and identify um, those um, key stakeholders who you don't know or only see every now and then use it as an opportunity right to have a conversation with um, with those you know with those folks so that um, they uh, know who you are mm -hmm. and also you know socialize your whatever the accomplishments are of your team right so that's that's the other thing and so that helps you as as well as 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 the team right and so um, and the other key thing is it's always about we it's never about I right so it's the team it's particularly if you if you lead a team if you mm -hmm. if you're leading a team you, you want to make sure that um, that your team is getting the credit for what the team is doing because while we've been mostly talking about political savvy in terms of stakeholders of people of you know in in executive management and executive leadership actually it's just as important for your peers for you to have the you know those kinds of um, relationships with peers and anybody who might be reporting into you right because there's nothing there's nothing preventing let's let's say somebody's looking at you to, uh, to head up another team or to head up a department and the higher ups might be looking at your track record but they're going to go ask your peers and they're going to ask people on your team you know what is it like to work with you 
Mm-hmm. And so political savvy actually works vertically and horizontally, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, that's very, very important um, because we take, we don't always look at being politically savvy that way. You know, we look at it as, as a negative and the fact of the matter is that um, it's very difficult to, to get too far up the ladder without having acquired um, some skill in that area. Oh, yeah. But Let's talk about well with doing it on your terms, right? Doing it, doing it on your terms. Right. And that's going to go into number three. But I want to comment on what you said before we go into number three. But it's true. I always talk about new levels, new devils, right? So when you... <laughs> When you go to these, when you get to that place where you're starting to get to that level of influence, you know, of course, we already know that your, you know, your value system is going to be compromised. You're going to have to start making just choices that may go may go against that. So again, you like you said, you need to be highly uh, skilled at being politically savvy, specifically when you get to those level of influences. When you're a worker bee, it won't impact you as much, right? But at some point during that time from your development. You need to learn how to become uh, politically savvy if you want to get, if you want to be able to sustain where you're trying to go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so that that that's good. And so I want to talk about number three, which is how do you acquire it without giving up your soul? But before we do that, I think you touched on something about how we go into having these negative perceptions about being politically savvy and don't want to play the game. And sometimes I think we can be our own worst enemy about, you know, about this because we just don't want to do it. But I think what Deborah's sharing tonight, ladies that are viewing is that, you know, you definitely just need to wise up, you know, wise up and learn um, how to be more savvy and, and recognize specific things. And then another thing too, before we go into this last, the last one is when you're working with difficult people, Deborah, that you know, make it hard for you to communicate with them or they keep stirring up the pot um, or they just, you know, they're just difficult people to work with. How do you never, how do you still become politically savvy in navigating, um, you know, the environment, you know, working in those environments when you're working with difficult people? I just want to make sure we kind of touch on that. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And, and that's a, that's, that is really a difficult situation to be in. So, so here's the thing, because I've had a number of, of those situations over the course of my career. Um, so one of the things that I've always tried to do, I haven't always succeeded, but I have always tried to stay on the high road, number one, right? That, that one of the other things that's really key, I can't stress this enough, is don't take the stuff personally. Right. Can't take it personally because what happens is if you take it personally, then you get emotional about it and that, you know, and then it just begins to unravel. So um, don't take it personally. Um, The other, the the key thing is um, know that whatever position that you are in, nobody handed that to you, right? So, you you know, I, 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 tell people all the time, I, I don't, I'm not in the position that I'm in because I'm cute. That's not what that, they didn't hire me because I was cute. So let's just be real, real clear about that. And it's not about being cocky. It's just being confident in my ability and, and my capability. Right. And so when I'm dealing with um, difficult people, I'm standing on the, the fact that I know I am, um, I'm there by right. Okay, I'm not there because I know somebody. I'm so glad you said that because it's something in the book, but T.D. Jakes has a book called, um, you know, The Ten Commandments of Working in a Hostile Environment. Environment, Yes, yes, and he talks in that book about when you are offered that job, that is your validation. Exactly. That you are good enough for that job because they chose you for that position. And that's all the validation you need. Right, and so the- the, I love sharing that. The key to that is then you don't take the 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 difficulty, um, the difficult situation. You don't take it personally, it, and it's really about um, sort of neutralizing sort of the the negative energy from the other person, right? Because that's that's really what that's all we're talking about here is is um, energy, and so um, everything needs energy to live. So if you If you go toe-to-toe with somebody, all it's going to do, right, is escalate, right? Mm -hmm. So 
it's not about ignoring it, but finding a way to neutralize it right. and keep it about the work. Mm -hmm. Don't take it personal because if you if you if you start taking it personally, then you start to react differently and, and it becomes an emotional thing. And then, you know, like I said before, it, everything just kind of goes downhill from there. So you always want to remain professional, remain calm, unless somebody just really gets crazy and then you just, you have to go to HR. I, I'm a big proponent of just stop talking. Right. Just, just stop. Just stop and exit the conversation and go to HR or go take a walk, you know, mm -hmm. or, or something like that. So that's very, very key. And know that you're there by right, right? I, by right of consciousness, you know, nobody handed you anything. And even if they did, then you still have to perform, right? And so right. making sure that all your stuff is right, making sure all your stuff is right, you know, that you're performing at the highest level that you possibly can. And so what you want to do is take all of that off the table, you know, and and so then if, if it becomes a, a gender issue or a racial issue or both, then that's the only thing left on the table and then that really becomes their problem, right? Because we're not going to feed that. Right. You know, we're not going to give that energy. We have the ability to not give that energy to, to escalate that. And so, um, you know, just neutralize that. Now, your job is not, and your job in life, period, is not to make everybody like you. They don't have to like you. That's not what they get paid for, right? But respect is commanded. But then, you know, how do you... you what are you modeling, right? So are you modeling in a way that um, that commands the respect? You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the important. It's, yeah. So it's about putting off those airs. That's going to, to right. that, that that body language piece that is also important. Um, that they can read it from that and know that they're that they're going to need to respect you based on without you saying a word. It goes back to something you said a few minutes uh, a few minutes ago, and and this is something that I think a lot of us really need to come to a better understanding of, and it's called presence, right? Mm -hmm. Presence, and and everybody has presence. The question is, what is your presence, right? right? So how do you show up when you walk into a room or when you're walking down the hall? What is it that people think or say? you know, about you when they see you coming. And so that's presence. And so that has a lot to do with it as well. So if you're always confrontational, then when you're in those difficult working situations, they're hard to manage, right? Because people come into um, the situation expecting, you know, it to be combatant with you. You know what I'm saying? And so... Yeah. It, again, it goes back to something we said early on, you know, how do you show up, you know, so your image is more than how you look. It has very much um, to do with your energy and, and what energy, what kind of energy and the quality of energy mm -hmm. that you bring to everything that you do, but particularly, you know, in, in the workplace. If everything is um, sort of negative and sort of bordering on, host, on on being hostile, then that just fosters more because, you know, as quiet as it's kept, you know, like attracts like. And so whatever the energy is that you're putting out, that's what you're going to bring to you. It doesn't matter whether it's in your personal life or in, you know, in the work environment. And, and nobody has more control over that than you do. And so, you know, um, being very um, conscious and aware of, the kind of energy that you bring into everything you do um, will make a huge, huge difference as well. So I like that. So I d it definitely is more being more conscious about your perception of it and the attitudes and the energy you bring to that. So that's, you know, we do have to stay accountable for our own behaviors yeah, you know, yeah. in the workplace too. So that's something we have to definitely stay mindful of. So let's talk about the last one, which is uh, um, how do you acquire with acquire uh, being politically savvy without giving up your soul, because we know so, some, of, some of them are like, "Oh God, really?" <laughs> right, like really. <laughs> so here's so, so a couple of things. One, it happens over time, not overnight, right? So don't you know, don't go read a bunch of books and stuff and think you know by next Monday you're going to be politically savvy. It does, it does take some time. It's an acquired skill, 
Um, but how do you do that without giving up your soul? And so this goes back also to something you said early on, Sherry, and that is absolutely everybody needs to know and understand what are their values, okay? Mm -hmm. what, what are you standing on? And yep. so what are the key values that um, infuse your life and show up in everything that you do? Now, I've had people say, you know, I never thought about that. And that might very well be true. And so if you've not thought about what your values are and what it is that you're standing on and, and what it shows, how it shows up in your life, now would be a good time to sort of do an audit of that. So that's the first thing. And why that's important is because you need to know where your line is, right? So for me, my values, um, I have really two cornerstones, I call it, right? right? So fairness and excellence, right? And so those are the two things for me. And then you can always, and you can usually tell what, your, what somebody's values are by what will set them off, right? What will tick them off? What will send them down, you know, make them just go left, right? right. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, when... I'm always talking about fairness and excellence. I don't care how you get there. I just want it to be right. You can use any method you want. Just make sure it's right. That's all I really care about. So the excellence and, and fairness. So what are you? You know, what are your two or three or four things that that your life is is standing on and is infused in everything in your life? And you need to know that because um, if somebody comes to you and wants you to, I don't know, do something that's a little left of center, um, you have to know whether or not you're prepared to say no, whether you're prepared to walk away from it, right? right. And so that's the first thing. So no matter what you do, whether it's becoming politically savvy or whatever it is that you, um, you embark on, not giving up your soul in the process of that is about you understanding the, your values and what's important to you. And you can prioritize them because, you know, maybe fairness is not that important to you. It's number one on my list, but it may be, you know, maybe profit is, is, is a key value for you and that's all you care about, which means that, you know, it's, other things are not as important. So you have to know what's important to you and what will keep you up at night and what will keep you, what will what will enable you to look at yourself in the mirror without your makeup on? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, I like that. Yeah. And that's true though. And I, so do you agree? I think for some of what I'm working with some of my clients, I have them do a, a personal values and a professional values list. I may, I have them do a, you know, two separate ones. And then that way he, they can see how they kind of intertwine with each other at different times and different phases of their, you know, and kind of so they can see the, how they may interject with each other at, at points and yeah. kind of get clear and define each of those so that there's no gray areas or if there tends to be something that's conflictual, they can kind of get a little more clarity on that. So um, I Actually, I, I have clients do just one set, mm -hmm. and, and, and what I ask them is, so when they check off and prioritize their values, I ask them how do those values show up in their personal and professional mm -hmm. life, right? Because it's, um, it's difficult to have a set of values over here and another set of values over here. Usually what happens is it's the same set of values, they just show up differently. Right. right? So, but, that, but I think I do it so, so they can see how it shows up differently. It shows up differently. Right, yeah. because if they're not aware of, aware of that, um, they need to see why, why it's showing up that way, specifically right. over here, so they can start learning how to deal with it differently. Does that make sense? Yeah, and or to make a conscious decision about uh, uh, any changes they want to make. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been this has been great. I I definitely I'm like when this hour went too fast. That I, did. I can't believe that I'm looking at my clock and I'm like really. <laughs> yes, it is eight fifty four. We got six minutes left. I do want to share with you all that Deborah Gray Young is going to be at our first annual conference here in Cincinnati, Ohio. She is going to be participating on our panel discussion um, about workplace wisdom, and we are so looking forward to that conversation. That's going to be a hot topic, good discussion. Okay, so all the stuff that she probably want to talk about here, she's going to talk about it <laughs> on the panel. And a lot of stuff is in my book too. So yeah. yeah. 
And so um, she also has two books. Share with them, Deborah, about the two books that you have. I think there's a really great books to add to your to your library for Black women. So that, share with them about the book, the two books that you have. So, so sure. So the first book that I did last summer is actually for young professionals, and um, um, it's a, it's called it's literally called the Young Professionals Handbook, and so it's for um, people coming into the professional workforce and just. Um, giving them some guidance in, in terms of how to interview for a job, how to research um, for an interview, how to dress for an interview, and then, you know, how do you conduct yourself once you get the job, and, um, and then also, um, you know, um, what, to, what steps to take in terms of your own professional development. So that one, um, and that one has just been included in a, a toolbox um, for a program here in Chicago that works with, uh, with young people. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. I'm hoping people find that very, very helpful. Um, the other book that I did, um, that I published earlier this year is called U3.0 which stands for sort of you at your, you know, at the, at the top of your game, um, a, a guide to overcoming roadblocks for professional women of color. And so that's really, it, it's a, a, a 25 sort of um, essays that also has some self-coaching exercises at the end of each chapter to just kind of help professional women of color navigate through some of the, the um, situations that they find themselves in. Although I did have um, a gentleman sent me a note and said, I, I know this is for women, but you should just know that that um, this black guy likes it too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been getting a couple of notes from men that that have been saying, hey, this is really cool. I know it's for I know it's for women, but I got a lot out of it. So well, both awesome. of them are uh, available on Amazon and Kindle. They're available. Yes, they're available. Oh, both, and she also is going to bring some copies to the uh, to the conference as well, um, so that it will be accessible for women to purchase um, on that date as well. So we are so excited about having her um, participate um, at our conference and and being able to share in her wisdom um, with with the women um, of our uh, conference upcoming conference. So we thank you so much, Deborah, for the nice career conversation. Um, a couple of things I know that, and this is so my fault. I'm so sorry, you guys. Typically, in the in the beginning, I was so excited to announce Deborah. I forgot to talk about that. You know, you can tweet your questions and your um, to us at uh, BCW Network or BCW Network uh, CEO, and also at Deb. What is your Twitter handle again? What is your uh, Coach D Gray Young? So even after this is over, feel free to, to uh, tweet um, any questions you may have, or just follow 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 uh, Deborah at. Uh, Coach D. Gray Young. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> All right. And follow her on Twitter. Um, and you can also check out her bio um, on our uh, bcwnetwork.com under the mentor and coaches page and learn more about Deborah. And then for those of you who are going to be attending our conference or if you have it and you're interested, please go to our website, bcwnetwork.com and register. Go on to 2015 conference and register um, and bring a friend. Bring a friend. Um, and we are going to be having breakout sessions. We're going to be doing panel discussions. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we have something awesome called Combo with the Masters, where you can have a conversation with experts, um, you know, kind of in a one-on-one, -on -one, not necessarily one-on-one -on -one setting, but a group setting. Um, and they're going to be sharing their expertise in different areas as well. So um, we're also going to have the Miss Fabulous, and I'm just so excited, Miss Cheryl from Cheryl Empowers is going to be our keynote morning speaker. Um, motivating us and getting us um, fired up about being passionate with power and pursuit in our careers and in our businesses. So just wanted to be able to share that with you guys. Um, you can also um, use our hashtag for the conference, which is BCW Network, C-O-N-F, and 3P, the three Ps, passion, power, and pursuit um, is, is uh, actually the tagline for our conference. We want to be able to share that with you guys. Now, I want to share with you next week's career conversation. Yes, I'm doing two back to back <laughs> this time. And we're going to have, so okay, I can't, but Sonia is going to kill me. I cannot say her last name. And this is being recorded. <laughs> Sonia Aileen is going to be on our career conversation next week, and she wrote this fabulous article called There Are No Friends at Work. And so we're going to talk about uh, this article she wrote and really elaborate more on what does she mean about there are no friends at work. Um, and we should have talked to just a little bit, touched a little bit about what that means because being politically savvy when it talks about that. But I'm sure we can touch base on that. 
um, open it up. But she will be on our Career Conversation, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. Um, and I want to go ahead and share two things with you, as I always do, when we go ahead and wrap up our career conversations. And the first one is, the life God gave you is larger than the life you've been living, which means that God gives us all special gifts. It is our responsibility to hone into who we are and start working in our strengths. So I'll leave you with my quote, which is, know your worth, discover your strength, and work on your purpose. And I hope to see you guys next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.